Hello and good evening everybody. So welcome to Back It Girl with AC Speedstar. Guys, Olympic Games kickstart tomorrow. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. Like it's absolutely amazing. It's gonna be two weeks of complete bliss watching athletes compete at the Olympic Games. I know you're all excited. I know South African, especially South African track and field athletes are going to light it up on the track. So comment below, tell me who you're backing at the Olympic Games. I have a massive feeling that our one and only Akani Simbini is going to bring the gold medal home to South Africa on 100 meters. And I know you guys agree. But tonight, sorry about that. Tonight we're chatting to Karina Horn, the 100 meter track queen. We're just waiting for her to log on so that we can join or she can join. But guys, let's get, yeah, there we go. Akane Sambini, drop those suggestions, drop your predictions in the comments below. Tell us who's going to win the 100 meter women, who's going to win the 200 meter women and men, who's going to win the 400 meters, who are your guys backing? Karina Horn is just struggling to, to log on. Um, so just helping it out over there. Tell us where you're backing. I see a lot of Akani's. I see you wait for Nick Eric. As well, we have, we have the long jumper. There we go. Karina Horn is on. Let's just get it added over here. Mm -hmm. So good evening to everybody. I see Elric El Land has also made it into the prediction. <laughs> There we go. Good evening, Karina. How are you doing, buddy? <laughs> Good, thanks. And you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for making time and joining us on Back Your Girl with Alyssa Conley and Backtrack. How are you feeling? Thanks for having me. It's only a pleasure. Oh my gosh, tomorrow is Olympic Games. Are you excited? <laughs> yes, yes and no. I'm excited for it to actually happening again, but as well, um, I wanted to be there, but yeah. We'll get into that. But first, everybody that's watching, welcome guys. Welcome to Back and Go with Alyssa. Tomorrow is Olympics. I'm excited. I'm going to be repeating it for the next hour. So just bear with me, please. Again, drop your predictions below. Let us speak about them. But tonight on the show, we have Rina Horn, the 100 meter SA sprint queen. Guys, listen to me when I say Karina is the only female in South Africa to break 11 seconds on the 100 meter. Only ever history is made. She holds that. So, I mean, that's all I have to say, right? Drops mic, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> now, other than that, Karina was in the semi final at the Beijing World Championships in 2015. She was in the semi final at the Rio Olympic Games in 2016 in the 100 meter. 2018 World Cup. Um, she also holds the 20. 16 SA indoor 60 meter record. So she's a record holder for the 60 meters as well as the um, 100 meters for South Africa. Welcome, Karina. <laughs> Tell us, buddy, what are you doing? Um, where you at right now? What's happening in life? I know you want to be in Tokyo deep down in your heart. You know, I feel it as well. I watch all these people arrive and I'm like, I want to be there so badly. So, so tell us where you're at in life right now. Yeah, that's very true. And I think you feel it as well. You also wanted to be there and together. So we both have the same feeling. Um, well, at the moment, um, like everybody probably still knows, I have an ongoing case as well about it soon to be done. Um, so I'm looking forward. I'm excited. Um, so for the rest of the time, I'm... I've started to train a few weeks ago, let's say two or three weeks ago only. Um, so mm -hmm. I haven't been, and I haven't been on a track for two years. So um, I'm not sure if I can run still, <laughs> but I'll <laughs> we'll see. Um, I've been, and every time I wanted to start training, like mentally it was very bad to start again. So mm -hmm. as I got that back, I wanted to start, then I got stitches, and then I stopped. Um, I even had COVID a few weeks ago, I had to stop again. Um, so yeah, I started training like three weeks ago, um, mm -hmm. in the garden. So, um, just getting the movement back, not actually sure where I'm at, not sure what's going to happen. I, do, I have no idea. It's amazing. I mean, it's really good to hear that 
you know, the case is nearly coming to a closure and you will soon know your fate and what's happening. And I mean, all that we can say is we can't wait to see the comeback and the return of Karina Horn on track. We can't wait for you to defend the title. We can't wait to see that sub-11 again. You say you can't run, but we know you can run. And we're always going to be back. And we're missing you on the track. We're missing that fire and that flame. And, you know, Karina bouncing on the 100 meters of his air, ready to kill everybody. So, yeah, we hope that you definitely come back soon. Um, and, I mean, if you do make that comeback and if things work out your way, you know, what, what, what can we expect from you in the future? Commonwealth Games next year. What's your plan? Yeah, well, you know, if you know, if you see me on the track, you, you should know I'll come back because I'm not going to come back with the... 11 2 or 11 3 like if i'm coming back i need to know i mean i'm in better shape than i that i am um, ever was in um mm. so for what's happening after commonwealth games yes for sure um i think there's a world champs as well 20 i think next year yeah next i'm year. not sure i'm not up to date with that mm. so much um i'll try indoors again as well um so yeah, normally I use indoors as well to just to check where I'm at. Um, the indoors is always there to see what I still need uh, for the 100 meters. So that's actually the reason why I am doing the 60 meters. Okay, perfect. Just remind us, what is your 60 meter record and what is your 100 meter record? And where did you achieve these times and when? The 60 meter record is 7.09 seconds. Um, and I think that was in France, um, and that was actually, it was two, 2018, and it was also, I actually broke it the first time as well in France, and then two days later, I had another meeting, uh, first one was 7-1-1, and then two days later, I ran again in France, um, mm -hmm. and then I broke it again um, to 7.09, um, and in the same year, 2018, I came back from the indoors. Um, I had national champs at TICS. I broke the South African record there for the first time um, at nationals. And then a few weeks later, I went to Doha to the Diamond League. Um, I ended fifth overall in that race, but um, I broke the national record in that race. It was a 10.98. Damn, and how do you feel being the first South African woman to ever run under sub-11? I mean, we all know we're racing and you wait to see the time and you see that first place time is fast. I mean, you said you're in the first, right? So you already know, okay, there's a chance. There's a chance that I ran sub-11. Yeah. How did it feel? Take us through that race. Yeah, no, it was amazing. I was actually in lane eight, so right at the end. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was blinks on the left at, at me. And yeah, it was a good race. It was like all the top sprinters, um, Ahore, Talu, uh, Elaine Thompson, Blessings, I can't remember. So I was right at the, at the end. Um, usually I don't like that, but I just told myself, okay, just focus on you this time. Um, as long as I can catch them in the beginning, I know I, I have a good end. So just make sure I have a good start. So in the start, I was like actually surprised. Um, and I felt good during the race and crossed the line. We, you look to the back and you can see the times are coming up. So number one mm -hmm. came up. And it was like 10, 8 something, number 2, 10, 8 something, number 3, 10, 9, number 4, 10, 9. I was like, okay, this is me now, somewhere, somewhere. I was like, please let it be, please let it be. And yeah, then my name popped up first with a 1098. And yeah, it was actually a good feeling because there was at the finish line where I was standing waiting for my name. Um, in, a, in a foreign country, there was a lot of South Africans there. Um, so it was really a good feeling. Absolutely amazing. And I mean... A lot of girls look up to you because a lot of the times they think, how, do, how is it possible to break 11 seconds? Like a lot of people are doing it and, you know, um, a lot of girls feel like it's not, it's not attainable, it's not reachable, it's not possible. But tell us, what makes it possible? How does Karina Horn train? Take us through your, you know, your routines. I know you train in Austria, you trained in Pretoria for a while and then you moved. So take us through how you get that quick. Yeah, so like as you just mentioned, I'm, I've changed coaches to an Austrian coach in 2012. And that was also actually probably the biggest decision that I ever had to make in my life, especially for my career. Um, especially in that year, 2012, um, I made a decision if I have to go to Europe, like um, I will have to find myself. So I told my parents, okay, I'm going to sell my car. And then I'm going to see if, my, if I sell my car, I know I have to go. I know it's in this and this and this. And then eventually I sold my car the same day as I posted. Um, then I went to Europe and um, didn't work uh, that well. 
Um, then I met the Austrian coach um, on, along the way. And then he came to South Africa August 2012. And yeah, we just decided um, we can work together. It was both a risk me and him took because um, he didn't actually had um, at least that he can refer to, okay, I've coached this one that ran 11-1 or I coached this guy that ran 10-1 um, and it was a risk for me. So and yeah, then we started to training together. It was It's a totally different program. I don't run further than 60 meters in my in my program, so 60 meters is my is my long distance. Um, yeah. So Monday, Wednesday, Fridays is my hard days, speed, technical stuff, blocks, explosive jumps on the track, um, and in the evening I will do a leg uh, gym session. So it will be cleans and squats and hip raises and also explosive things um, after after each exercise. Mm -hmm. um, and then on Tuesdays and Thursdays will be my easy day. So it will be tempo runs. It will, sometimes if it's 20 meters, it will be like 70, 20 meters, but like really at a slow pace. Um, 10 in each set, just run up and down. Um, abs. Um, a lot and of upper abs. body jump. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We've seen your abs. We've seen your abs all over Instagram. And a lot of the time, I mean, Temba even mentioned it, mentioned it now, but a lot of athletes always say, like, when they see you at Tux, you'll spend five hours on track, you know, the minimum you spend on track is three hours. So it's, it's really a lot of time and effort that you put on track to get to where you've been to. You know what I mean? So I think, like, that's one thing that you have to definitely highlight, that it doesn't come easy. It's hard work, it's dedication, it's perseverance, it's, you know, taking the, the challenges and just fighting through it. On that note, tell us, what was your biggest, except for what you're going through now, <laughs> What was your biggest challenge in your career so far? It was, it was probably <laughs> the decision that I had to make. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it was probably the decision that I had to make um, if I still want to carry on um, in 2012 after all the disappointments I've been through. And um, like you train so hard and you get nowhere. Um, mm. And I was that person like... I only do athletics. I didn't have a job or um, sideline income athletics. Mm -hmm. And that's what it, so eventually I had to decide, um, listen, I can't, you can't, I can't go anywhere with the 11 seven. So I have to make a decision. And I think that was probably the hardest that I had to go through. It's not necessarily on the track itself, but um, career wise, I think that was the hardest. And especially when I made the decision, um, you know, doing the visas and stuff, Everything was against me. I remember as well, we went to the embassy. My parents wanted to come with um, just to see where I'm going to stay. And it's a new thing. So she wants to make sure I'm okay. And yeah. I'm standing on this side and my mom is standing on that side with the exact same documents. And they declined me the whole time. And even the lady is just like showing me, this is not your birth certificate. This is not this. So I, I eventually called the people after like probably the fifth or sixth time. It's like, listen, yeah, I don't think I can come. So... Yeah, it, it was also a difficult journey um, to get there and to make the decision, especially when you eventually make that difficult decision. And then there's still things coming at you to show you, okay, you're not going to, you won't be able to do that. You're not going to go there. Mm. Decline, yeah, decline there. No, yeah. So it's it's uh, what comes and how you handle it, the, the hurdles that's come to you for, for what you want to, to achieve and, and what you want to do. I think that's a very important message, especially for females in sports because a lot of the time we we'll always get asked the question like you know when are you guys gonna pull up your socks when are you guys gonna run faster when are you guys gonna achieve what the guys are achieving but it's not as easy you know we go through our own challenges we go through our own process and journey um to get there so what can you tell like the younger you you know the younger girl who has watched you train has watched you compete has watched you race to stick to what she's doing and to stick to her dream to become an olympian yeah, I, I think um, whatever you feel in your heart, you should go for and don't let anyone or anything make you doubt for what you want mm. in, in, in life. Um, never, never doubt, never doubt yourself and never make anyone else uh, doubt your dreams. No, definitely. Karina Warren, your highlight of your career thus far? I think, uh, well, I, I think there can be two and I think um, why I will say this is with the with the Tux, uh, the nationals at Tux, um, the semifinals when I broke the first 
time the South African record, 11.03. Um, mm. I actually knew it, like I felt it um, in the warm up. I even told my parents, like, no, it's going to happen. If you want to come watch, you have to watch the semifinals, not the finals, and blah, blah, blah. I just knew, I just felt it was warm weather. So I knew in the beginning, and I felt good when I warmed up. I was like, okay, everything is going like like it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. um, the difference is when I ran in Doha, the 10.98, um, I didn't feel it. It was like, I remember even the, the run-throughs I made in the warm-up area, it was all. It was a rush, and you here, then you there, and I didn't feel it, so I didn't know what was going to happen. And at the end of the race, I didn't know what it can be. Where and at uh, in Pretoria, I actually knew. So yeah, so both is yeah. Damn, must feel great when you know today I'm running sub eleven. Guys, come watch me today. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your highlights about the Olympic Games, you know. Everybody wants to know, like, how it felt being there. Because it's obviously the biggest dream in any track and field, any athlete's um, life. It's, it's your biggest dream to get to the Olympic Games. And tell us about your experience. Yeah, well, let me just think about it. It's a few years ago. <laughs> um, I, think, I think that the, the night campus... <laughs> <laughs> that was the best part. <laughs> you know, um, the first time walking on the track, you know, it's the the feeling is just different. Like like I've told uh, my parents and friends that I'm speaking to is, um, I'm used to running at Diamond Leagues where the, st the exact same stadiums, Olympic stadiums, are packed full and full of people. Um, you run, you come to the Olympics. It's the same people that you race, but it's just a totally different feeling. The experience, mm -hmm. it, it's different nerves. It's everything is just different, and it's a uh, excitement as well that you can't explain. And uh, especially because, like you say, it's it's everyone's dreams. It's the highest achievement in sport that you can make, and for eventually after the posters that you put on your wall since you're a little kid, and then eventually you stand here at the Olympics. So, um, yeah, it's just a feeling you can't explain. 100%. On that note, posters that you put up and people you look up to, who was your motivation, your role model, your inspiration growing up and, you know, who got you keeping at athletics? <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure if that's a good question. You don't have to say it. You don't have to say it, Lassa Conley. It's okay. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a photo of you with a cross on it. I... <laughs> Target. <laughs> <laughs> he is playing darts. <laughs> no, just, um, it it hasn't been actually an athlete. My motivation mm -hmm. it comes from um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh so, wow! Yeah, that is, that is it, unexpected. Why? It is. Mm. I just like when I I've watched this one specific video from him, where he's like speaking, where he's not training, and where he's speaking about life. And just his outlook towards life um, and how he sees things, how he's thinking, um, especially when he said as well, he was at the competition, at one of his, the first competition he ever been through and he knew he can win. And then I think two days before his, his father died and mm. then he still made the decision to, to stay at the competition because he's like as well, like his father lived, he had his life and easier now to do this um he's mm -hmm. not changing, changing his plans he knows what he's what he's doing in life he knows what he's where he's going at and he's doing everything to achieve where he's going and yeah just just the way he trains and as well um especially it's, it, it is important for me as well in anybody um the mind and how you think and how you see things mm. that is that is what attracts me um so yeah, yeah that, that is yeah, we definitely know that goal setting is very important to you. You posted a, a video recently of your ball um, that you have that you probably use for rolling out at training and, you know, trigger <laughs> points and stuff. And and I also do know that you, you often write on your spikes. You know, you write um, messages of encouragement and, you know, the times, et cetera, that you want to run. Tell us how important is it, you know, to mentally or to visually see what you want to achieve on the ball, your time that you wrote and on your spikes and all those messages. How important is that? Yeah, you know, I, I, it depends on, on yourself. It's, it's probably not the most important thing, but um, like when you're still at training, 
and you see the ball, especially if you're not um, in the mood that specific day, or mm. um, because not every day is the same. You know, you can go to the track or go to the gym that day, and you're not feeling well, or you don't just feel like doing it. And like you will know as well, if you go to the track and you do something off, there's no use of doing it in any way. Mm. So, and if I go to the gym, I'm just clean 60 k's. There's no use. I can just pack up my bags and leave. And mm. I start packing out my my bag to start to warm up. And then I see, for example, the ball or the magnesium way for my hands. I wrote on times and things like that. So as I pack out and start to warm up, then I see this and I see that. And and that's that's where it's important for me just to mm. on that day specifically. And especially when you're out of the country and it's even more difficult. You're not in, mm. on a familiar place. You're not, you don't have um, people around you that you can talk to. Then when I go to the track, there's always people there making jokes. Now you go to the track, there's no one to talk to. It's a, it's a different vibe. It's a different scene. Mm. So, and then to see this uh, familiar things that gives you that feeling, a specific feeling as well. And to see that, um, that's where it, where it comes in. Yeah. Very important. Um, statement you made there, like you know, when you when you when you're training or traveling abroad and competing abroad, you don't have that familiarity. And now, obviously, with Olympic Games, there's no spectators, there's no family allowed. How do you think that's going to affect the athlete's performance, cross sport? Because you know, some sport actually really relies on the crowd and the stadium and the spectators amping them up and getting them in the zone. I, I think of things like field events, you know, all of that. And do you think it's going to have a um, a huge impact on performance? Yeah, well, it, it, like you say, it depends on the person as well. Um, but I think um, a lot of people that I've, that I've spoken to uh, that's there um, says uh, the crowd is something that I'm going to miss. And I think if I was there as well, it certainly would, would have affected me because um, that is one of the parts that sucks me up as well, um, mm. to know your family in the crowd as well and... Um, they are there at least to watch you. Um, it's a different feeling. It's a different excitement that you get. Um, yeah. And I think the athletes that's in Tokyo as well also relies on the crowd. Um, mm. But they probably uh, prepared for it mentally as well throughout the throughout the year as well. Um, yeah. Like I know, I, I can't remember what tennis player, like a, a world-class tennis player withdrawn as well because they, there's no crowd and family can't be there. So they just don't go. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I just don't know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> it's the Greek yes. guy. It's the Greek guy. <laughs> oh, the Greek guy, yes. Mother yes. Sasa. Sa, sa, sa. Yeah, that's what <laughs> So tell us, Sonny, you said if you go to the gym and you, and you clean 60 cages, you might as well leave. What are your, what are your PVs in clean, squat, thrust, um, bench, all of those? Give us some numbers there. Clean, 110, one rep. A squat, 250, two reps. Mm -hmm. Hip thrust, 300 kilograms, seven reps. Um, bench, 110. One rep. Yeah, one rep. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to leave it there. It's fine. If anybody else can... Bench, squat, clean, <laughs> heavier than Karina Horn. Props to you, but I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> Give us your prediction. 100 meter men's, who's going to win it at the Olympics? 100 meter women's, who's your money on? 200, 400. Just tell us who are you looking forward to seeing and who, who your money is on. Men, 100 meter, Connie, um, Bramol. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe Blake hmm. or the other American sprinter. I can't remember. Okay. I'm not sure. Uh, woman? Woman. Tilly Ann. Elaine Thompson. And maybe Talu. She's always hmm. getting at the, at the right places on the right times. I think yeah. she, she might. She can run, I remember 2016, you, you were there as well at the Durban, at the African Champs. Um, you won the 200, I think. Second, Salou. Second, Salou. 
Um, yeah. And in the 100 meters, she came third. Mm. And then I think it was three weeks later, it was the Olympics and grabbed, I think, fourth in both 100 and 200. Yeah. So, yeah, I think she might get bronze this time. Yeah, she definitely comes through when yeah. it matters, you know. And, um, yeah. Yeah, and other events like 400, who you look I mean, have, did you watch the USA trials and Jamaican trials and all of that? Or have you just been, ah, athletics, I'll see you in four years' time? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I haven't I haven't really watched athletics. If I scroll down and I see a result, then I see it. If not, I mm. don't see it. Um, mm. But I think Ray Benjamin, he's looking at the 400. Wade is coming mm. back, so yeah, um, looking forward to see Wade again. Um, mm -hmm. I think he's going to make a statement as well. It's a Olympic title that he's defending. Um, yeah, and who else? Wenda is going to do the 400 hurdles. She has a yeah. good chance as well. In the and I think um, the 4x100 meter men stands a very good chance as well yeah, to, to put us on the map over there with the middle. Definitely, yeah. Mm. Definitely that well. Yeah, and then other events like or sport. Um, I think Chad, um, he's probably looking to bag a few medals again. Definitely. Um, yeah, and I think the rowers as well are in good shape. Um, mm. And I also, I like to watch weightlifting. I'm not sure if there's anyone from South Africa, but <laughs> I'm going to watch the weightlifting. <laughs> if there's any other sport you could have done, what would it be besides <laughs> athletics? Ooh. Ballet. Karina. <laughs> <laughs> really? You, ballet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, wait. Um, probably weightlifting, yes. Mm. I think so. Just the thing, I don't know the technique. Yeah, yeah, true. Any other event on tra in track and field except for 100 meters? What would you try out? <laughs> Maybe pole vault. Ah. Yes. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. Why? Because you can walk on your hands for really long. I, I don't know. Why pole why vault? Bo uh, actually, I think it's because my coach, when I started training with him, he coached a very good um, uh, pole vaulter from, from Austria. Um, mm. And just like when we trained together and she's going there with the pole and doing this funny thing, it's like, I also want to yeah. try it. Yeah, um, yeah. It's like a... pretty interesting. I want to try discus. Do you want to try discus? Oh, it's difficult. I tried it a lot in, in Austria where I'm training. I'm training sometimes I'm like a farmish gym. Yeah. And this, it's a, especially a gym for discus. And then I tried. It's difficult. It's really hard. I see your mom says here that you did ballet when you were eight years old. Do you want to show us a move? I mean, do you want to prove no, she's that? <laughs> And we have a question. We have a question. Yeah, how do you feel about athletes being disqualified uh, for testing positive for cannabis? Yo, that's that's a difficult answer. Um, mm. Because at the end, like as well, I'm in the same situation. You ne you don't know um, because I'm in the situation. I can I can say my experience as well. Um, you ne you you like from the outside you don't know what really happened um mm. i know with my case as well seven seven o'clock news i was on it and everybody was like they crucified me mm. um so with this case as well we don't know what what happened and my my point of view um if you're a professional athlete at that level um you should know not to do it especially Mm. If you, you she she ran the ten ten eight. If you're an American um, national champ, you should know what to take and what not to take. And even if it's just that, you know it's mm. illegal, then don't do it. If a discipline is illegal, you don't discipline, no matter what. Mm. True story. Karina on guys, I got one question here asking: Do you follow a strict KFC diet, guys? Listen, yeah, I sit next to Karina. <laughs> At events, right? I can attest to this. And before Karina's 100 meter final or whatever, 
<laughs> he's eating a massive large pizza and i'm there with my tuna and my salad and my veggies and i'm like how is this girl eating a large pizza before racing how how do you do that tell us <laughs> <laughs> why do you keep a secret away? <laughs> pizza, guys, eat pizza. You want to run fast? Eat pizza. <laughs> yes, eat pizza at lunch and have a chocolate croissant for breakfast. <laughs> I still don't believe. Like, I don't know how you can do that. Yes. But yeah, I guess it's different things that you you know you're used to and you're used to eating. you know those type of foods and training on them and whatever and you're always teasing me when i'm eating my vegetables and my broccoli and my spinach and stuff but hey i'm not as fast as a 10.98 so yes, what was that like, you yeah. carry now <laughs> you have to go to kfc after training at least five times a week but i guess if you spend five hours on the track then it makes sense I spent an hour and a half to hours maximum you know so I guess it's workload you know workload so you deserve it this time I give it to you maybe <laughs> <laughs> So Karina Horn yeah. when can we see you back on the track guys Karina and I have been speaking and sprinters on track we must see fires on track so we might join the veterans I don't know I don't know if we can handle we'll see but they know if, if they see us back on the track they should know if they if you We're see back us back on the that. track it's it's flames karina won let's see if you still that. let's see if you still know your track and field the leader in this game is it's either rick and eto wenda so you know they they what of, they what so listen you have to name as many female athletes as possible in 30 seconds. Okay. It's easy. 30 seconds. Okay. okay. Start it 5 seconds later. No, are you ready? Three. No. What must I do? We can net is leading at the moment. Thank you for very fine Timba and Michelle. So, as soon as I go, you're going to name as many female athletes as you can in 30 seconds. How much does we can net have? Asian. Must you test my my memory now? Yes. What's wrong with yes. um, she's she's at least borderlining twenty one. I'm sure she's she's over twenty for sure. And um, do I need to do I need to say the surname as well? Can I just give names or surname? I mean, you don't have to say the surname, but they have to be known in track and field. You know, like yeah. you can't yeah, just if known, like then I can only say the name or surname. Like if you say Shelly Ann, it's fine. I, we all know yeah. Shelly Ann. Yes, you know what I okay. mean. Yeah. Um, we all know Veronica Campbell, but I'm sure the surname yes, will automatically come up. Uh, <laughs> 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 you know they say when you run a race, don't focus on your competition next to you. Focus on your race. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I need to know what I need to beat. Okay, you ready? Yes. Thirty seconds. Three, two. What? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. False start. False start. Yeah, you're on the cheat. Three, two, one, go. Okay, me, you, Winda, Rikanet, Elisa, Karina, <laughs> Marion, James, Flojo, Ah, uh, Veronica, Kevo, Brown, Kieran, Stewart, Kamlita, Jeter. That's them. I wait on Lova, Daphne Skippers, Sally Pearson, Lola Jones, Sandy Morris, um, Sarah Peterson, Sunet Folun. Type seventeen. What do you mean? Me, you. Me, you. You cheated. I counted twenty-five. I, I carry no one. I, 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 we have to rewatch this live and see what's happening. No, I got it in five. You lost me when you said me, you. I'm like, who's me and you? <laughs> <laughs> well done, Karen. I won. You're so sharp as ever. And, you know, buddy, we just can't wait to see you back on track. We can't wait to see you representing South African. See, Temba, 15. He's, he's confirming. What? Yeah. 15? Temba says you got 15, yeah. 
Tate. No, you can't count. Temba, Karina says you need to practice your counting, my friend. But and it took it's... you guys 15 seconds to realize what I meant by me and you. So I need another 15 seconds. <laughs> Karina, who is me and you? Honestly, no. <laughs> me, you. <laughs> but hopefully me and you can make a comeback to this thing we call track. But anyway, we're backing you 100% and we can't wait to see you back on track again and, you know, training and sprinting and just carrying the females on track again. Um, we miss you on the track. We miss the Karina bounce. We miss the Karina swag. <laughs> Thank so. you. We can't wait to see you there. And thank you for making time for us, buddy. Um, keep well, keep safe. Um, yeah, and we will be in touch soon. Perfect. Thanks for having me. It's only a pleasure. Thank you to everybody who watched, everybody who engaged, interacted. Guys, don't forget, Olympic Games starts tomorrow. Back our athletes, watch them, support them all the way. And I will see you next week for Back Your Girl with Alyssa Connolly. Good night. <laughs>